This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and in this video we're going to be looking at the other alternate functionality of our camera controller system, which is if we want our camera to be a perspective camera instead of an orthographic camera. Now with the perspective camera, the big thing that changes is how we zoom, because we can't just change the size of the actual view. We could adjust the, um, ang the I believe it's called the viewing angle a little bit, but the problem is that's going to have some weird effects on what we're seeing. And so instead, what's really just easier is to actually kind of move the camera in and out on the um, focal point. And so that's what we're going to be implementing today. So first off, I'm going to set up our scene now so that we actually have a perspective camera. First part of this is I'm going to change the projection here in the camera itself to perspective. And so yeah, instead of doing this field of view, we're actually going to move our camera in and out, like I said. And so what we're going to do is we're going to also quickly go into the, if you're using the um, project that we have here, I'm going to go into the camera profiles and I'm going to quickly switch this over from the demo cam ortho in the post processing volume here where it says profile, I'm going to put in the demo cam. With that in place, the other thing we need to do now is to go to our scripts and to our zoom folder and we're going to create a new zoom strategy. So I'm going to create a new C sharp script here and I'm going to call this perspective zoom strategy. I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. I can delete the start and update methods from in here. And instead, this is not going to inherit from mono behavior. Instead, it will inherit from I zoom strategy. I'm going to implement the interface so I get the zoom in and zoom out methods. And I'm actually going to need a couple of additional things in here. First thing I'm going to want inside of here is a vector three, which I'm going to call the normal camera position. And what this really is, is it's going to figure out the position based on the offset that we established in a normalized, I can even call this actually normalized. It's probably a little bit more descriptive. So it's going to take that camera position and it's going to normalize it to a, um, so it's so to a magnitude of one. And so then whatever our zoom is set to, it can simply multiply this position by that zoom level and it will give us the appropriate position. The second thing we're going to have in here is in fact that float current zoom level. And that's how we're going to keep track of where the camera should be. Now where we establish these is inside of our constructor. So we're going to say public zoom perspective, or sorry, public perspective zoom strategy. And we're going to pass into this a camera called cam, our vector2 offset information, as well as a float of our starting zoom level. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say our normalized camera position is going to be equal to a new vector 3 of 0f mathf.absolute offset.y and negative mathf.absolute of offset dot x. This is very similar to what we did in the initial setup in our camera manager. It's just going to be now doing this to feed into this. Um, here, the thing we need to do is we need to make sure that it's normalized. So that again just means that no matter how big or small of a vector three you have, it just gets reset to a magnitude of one, which is something that we can easily use then to multiply by our zoom level. So we have that there. And then we're going to have a current zoom level equal to our starting zoom. And lastly, we're going to call a method that we haven't actually created yet called position camera. And this is going to actually be used by both the constructor as well as the zoom in and zoom out methods. So we're going to want it in all three places. And that's going to be, so I'm going to say position camera. It's going to take in the cam 
parameter there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do control period and generate this method for ourselves. Here it is. And what's nice here is because I populated this with the camera here, it, um, C Sharp knew that I wanted that as a parameter. So in here, what we're going to do is I'm going to delete this and I'm going to say, well, one line here, it's going to be cam.transform.local position. So relative to our focal point is going to be equal to the normalized camera position times the current zoom level. And that's all we need. This, is, this really gives us the ability now to say whatever the zoom level is, position the camera properly along that sort of line of this vector. All right. Now for zoom in, basically what we're just going to be doing is reducing this zoom level and then positioning it properly and then positioning the camera where it ends up. So this is going to look a lot like our orthographic um, controls at this point. So we're going to say if current zoom level is less than or equal to the near zoom limit, then return because we're already as close as we're ever going to get. Then we'll say current zoom level equals mathf.max of current zoom level minus delta or the near zoom limit. And then finally we'll position the camera. Same idea for the zoom out. I'm actually going to paste this in here. I'm just going to check first off if this is greater than or equal to the far zoom limit, then we've, we've already zoomed out as far as we can. Otherwise, I'm going to take the math, mathf.min of the current zoom level plus the delta or the far zoom limit. So it's always going to be bound to that farthest zoom limit. And then we'll just position the camera again. And that's all we really need in here for this to work right now. You can save that. And this will now work as our perspective zoom strategy. However, we need to be able to assign that to our zoom strategy instead of our orthographic one. And we could certainly do this manually. You could just go into the camera manager and manually change that to a new perspective zoom. But it would be kind of nice to be able to have the option of just switching back and forth when we want to and having our camera manager adapt appropriately. And we can do that relatively simply. We're going to do that with a ternary operator, which is basically going to ask the question, is our camera orthographic or not? And if it is orthographic, use the orthographic zoom strategy. If it's perspective camera, use the perspective strategy. So how we'll do that is I'm actually going to just comment out this line for right now, because this is the one we're going to be changing, where we're assigning that zoom strategy. And instead, we're going to say zoom strategy equals and we're going to say cam.orthographic. And so that's going to ask the question, is the camera perspective currently set to orthographic? If so, then we're going to use new orthographic zoom strategy. And again, for that, we need to pass in the cam and the starting zoom. Else, we're going to use a new perspective zoom strategy. So if this is false, then we must have a perspective camera, so we'll use the perspective zoom strategy, which takes in the camera itself. It's going to take in our camera offset values, and finally our starting zoom values again. Now there's one little gotcha with this. When you're using things like these um, that in, inherit from these interfaces, the ternary operator actually doesn't like this because it thinks these are two different things and it doesn't know what should be going into this zoom strategy. You just have, there's a really quick fix for this fortunately though, you just have to put in, you have to cast this to the type of the zoom strategy, which in this case is I zoom strategy. So on this first one here, I just have to say parenthesis I zoom strategy and the whole thing goes away. I don't, I don't know exactly why you only need to do it to the first one and not to the second one as well, but this just knows now this is being treated as an iZoom strategy, and so therefore this must be two, and they can be assigned to the zoom strategy variable. But that gives us the ability to now say, depending on what the camera is, use the appropriate strategy. With that in place, we can go back to Unity, and we don't actually need to do any more updates to the... Um, 
project itself. The project, this is all gonna be happening under the hood inside of our scripts. So we can just go, I can click on my camera focus here to see the control, see what's going on. I hit play and I can zoom in and out. I can move around and I can rotate. But in this case, I now have a perspective camera that is giving me kind of the full three illusion of three dimensions getting smaller into the distance. And everything works as we would hope. Now, one thing to note with this is that when you're doing with a um, doing this with a perspective camera instead of orthographic, you probably don't want your near zoom limit quite as small. Right now, I think it's set to two, which looked okay with the orthographic camera. It gets very, very close with the, um, as we can see here, it's getting very close to the ground. It's not really a particularly useful view with the perspective camera. So you may just want to adjust, in that case, the near zoom limit to maybe even something like a five or a four. So that when you hit play, you zoom in, it's a little bit more reasonable than that had been. But that gives you that functionality and that option now. And you can obviously use this with both the mouse controls and with the keyboard controls as well. And so now you have a fully functioning and um, some various options for your camera controls. So I hope you found this useful for your game development. If you're working on any kind of a strategy game or management game or something like that where you need this kind of overarching view of things, this can be hopefully really helpful to you. As always, thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe and um, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon if you want to support more videos like these. Thank you as always for watching this series and others, and I'll see you next time.